Four men have been jailed for their involvement in an international operation that saw cocaine and cannabis imported into the UK and Ireland. They conspired to bring the drugs from the Netherlands and a lot of the drugs went to Ireland, but some of them went to the West Midlands and also London. Anthony Terry, 49, from Wolverhampton in the West Midlands, organised the importation and was under surveillance when £1.6 million worth of cocaine was seized at a Belfast port in Northern Ireland on the 22nd of February 2021. The drugs were transported from the Netherlands to England and then went on ferry to Northern Ireland and they were hidden in fuel tanks. When Terry learned about the seizure, officers watched him in the Wolverhampton area move identical fuel tanks that were seen inside the vans. He was arrested the same day. Terry and his organised crime group associates were using the encrypted messaging service EncroChat. And for anybody that is unfamiliar with it, I have a whole playlist on EncroChat cases and the, also the people that are battling to try to prove that EncroChat evidence is not sufficient in court. During the initial investigation, they discovered that in 2020, he had smuggled money and also drugs for other people. Terry enlisted Michael Collis, 62 years old, and he was from Wolverhampton, to travel to the Netherlands where he met contacts to pick up cocaine. Two more lorry drivers were recruited by Terry. One of them was called Mohammed Khan, he was from Birmingham and supplied customers in the UK. And Jospel Singh from Wolverhampton supplied the Republic of Ireland. It was revealed in court that Terry instructed Collis to travel to the Netherlands on the 6th of April 2020 during lockdown and collected 17.5 kilos of cocaine. From there, he divided them up and Khan delivered 6 kilos to Luton and 4 to Slough. Collis travelled then to Ireland to hand over the remaining 5.5 kilos in County Wicklow. At the same time, Terry sent Singh, the other courier, to London to collect 10 kilos of cannabis that were vacuum packed. The drugs were taken to the West Midlands where the cannabis was packaged and then it was taken to the Republic of Ireland. Following the successful delivery of the 17.5 kilos, a few weeks later, Collis went back to pick up another 18 kilos of cocaine and he went on to deliver 10 to dealers in the UK and the rest went to Ireland. The final drug run that was captured on EncroChat messages occurred between the 26th of May and the 3rd of June 2020. Terry discussed the cannabis delivery and his driver Singh was sent to pick it up from Leicester and take it to the Republic of Ireland. Even after it was revealed that EncroChat was hacked, they continued to distribute the drugs. Terry and Collis continued their criminality and NCA investigators established that Collis had travelled to Holland in July and September of 2020. The couriers Collis and Singh were arrested in March 2021 and Khan had been arrested earlier in December 2020. Following the trial in November 2022, Terry was jailed for 18 years in relation to the Belfast cocaine seizure. He was charged with additional drug offences from the messages that were recovered on EncroChat. Collis also pled guilty to drug offences in April and Singh and Khan were convicted on the 19th of May 2023 at Wolverhampton Crown Court after a four-week trial. All four of them will be sentenced at a later date. I look forward to hearing what the viewers have to say on this story and in some other EncroChat related news. 34-year-old Lee Walsh from Manchester has been jailed for his involvement in the supply of Class A drugs across the country. Walsh appeared at Manchester Crown Court on the 17th of May 2023 and pled guilty to conspiracy to supply heroin, cannabis, amphetamine and ketamine at an earlier hearing. The court heard that from March 2020 to June 2020, Walsh used an encrypted mobile phone called EncroChat and he operated under the name of Green Champ and he communicated with a number of other organised criminals to arrange the production, sale and importation of drugs. He was arrested on the 9th of June 2021 and messages retrieved from his encrypted device revealed hundreds of conversations showing that Walsh owed around £130,000 in drug debts and was attempting to purchase a firearm to protect himself. Further messages revealed that he played a role in the importation of chemicals from all over Europe and also the UK and they were sent to a man called The Chef and it was a term for an individual who produces the drugs. A large order of cannabis was also linked to Walsh and it was found to be concealed in a shipment of chicken coming from Ireland and it was intercepted by NCA officers. Detective Constable Rick McIver from Thameside Organised Crime Unit said this investigation was part of Operation Venetic, which is the National Crime Agency's answer to tackling EncroChat devices and the hack. 
The use of the encrypted devices, they said, were exclusively used by criminals. But this has later been contradicted when it has been revealed that people like royalty and celebrities also used EncroChat to try to stay secure with their conversations. And Walsh was never caught with any significant amount of drugs. They based the whole investigation and conviction on pictures shared via EncroChat. And this follows on from the recent rulings in the Investigatory Powers Tribunal that has found that NCA officers conducted lawful warrants. This was reported by Computer Weekly. The IPT ruling rejected claims from defence lawyers that the NCA withheld critical information when it applied to a senior judge for a warrant to obtain messages from the EncroChat system. But in a significant legal move, the IPT referred questions about the legal admissibility of EncroChat evidence back to the criminal court to resolve, opening up the way for further legal challenges. The decision comes as prosecution lawyers are attempting to obtain a public interest immunity certificate to withhold information from defence lawyers about how the hack was carried out and they are basing this on national security grounds. Defence lawyers argue that the information should be disclosed to enable defendants to have a fair trial. Today's judgement is welcomed by the NCA, it has been reported, and they reiterated that since they hacked EncroChat, they have seized 5.5 tonnes of drugs that were Class A, 165 weapons and £75 million in cash. The NCA obtained messages from 9,000 EncroChat users in the UK with the help of French and Dutch authorities. Even though the Dutch have denied that they were involved in this uh, hack, it was solely the French. They hacked the servers that were based in France and this is how they retrieved the messages and this is also why the judges said that it was legal because the messages were taken from the server and not intercepted via live transfer and that's the difference between being legal and illegal in a court of law. But there is a lot of questions raised as to whether France was able to share the information legally with the NCA in the UK. The tribunal ruled that the refusal of courts to admit evidence obtained by interception during the course of trans transmission was a policy decision to preserve the technique for future intelligence purposes. The judge found that the core evidence by NCA intelligence officer Emma Sweeting over a key meeting with a French counterpart called Jeremy Decaux to confirm how the implant worked was credible and reliable. The court heard that Sweeting had typed an email setting out the understanding of the implant obtained messages and that they were taken from storage in the handset and showed to Decaux who spoke poor English, they said, and but verbally agreed it was correct. The NCA used the email as the basis for the warrant application. After seeking confirmation in writing from the French, the tribunal heard the four issues dealt with in the IPT ruling were, number one was whether the NCA failed in its duty of candor when it sought approval from the judicial commissioner with the result that the warrant should be set aside. The second issue was whether the NCA was required to obtain a mutual assistance warrant by reason of Section 10 of the Investigatory Powers Act and whether the absence of such a warrant rendered the making of the European Investigation Order unlawful. The third issue was whether the NCA obtained a targeted interference, which is a TI warrant, to lawfully acquire the EncroChat data because of Section 9 Investigatory Powers Act. And the verdict stated the NCA did not need to obtain the TI warrant. The fourth issue was whether the NCA was required to obtain a bulk equipment interference warrant to lawfully obtain the EncroChat data. And the verdict was the NCA did not need that warrant. And for EncroChat activists, one of the decisions that was not decided and also gives them some hope is the live interception. The tribunal did not decide whether the EncroChat interception carried out was in accordance with the TEI warrant obtained by the NCA. It rejected arguments from the crime agency that any inquiry into expert evidence about the nature of the interception would undermine the protection that Parliament had intended to give to organisations executing warrants. The tribunal said it would decide on other issues raised by defendants, including whether they had been in breach of human rights laws, including whether they had breached any human rights laws. And once the Crown Court proceedings had been resolved, they would determine whether EncroChat evidence was admissible in court. The case has been appealed to the Court of Appeal. So this is far from the end of the battle for EncroChat, for people trying to prove that it isn't lawful and others trying to prove that it is. So I really appreciate you joining me today and I really want to hear what people have to say on this story. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and follow on social media as well at scarcitystudios.com.